This trilogy of plays written by Renan Munro looks at three reigns of Stuart kings in the 15th century and they're stories that were quite well known by previous generation to Rona's. Her mother told her the stories and um, you can find them in Walter Scott. So Rona wanted to reintroduce them really and kind of create a history cycle for Scotland. So each one uh, concentrates initially anyway on uh, one of the James Kings, James I, James II, James III. James I was held prisoner for 18 years by the English and was released by Henry V to go back and take up the crown. And the plan was that James I would come back and stop the war where Scotland were fighting with France against England. But actually it turned out very differently. But James has a very tricky time coming back to a country that has largely uh, forgotten him, or at least don't want him. Just a wee memory lapse about what's supposed to happen to all that tax money. Awesome. Shall I remind you what the law says? The law, we, we know what it says to, to me, oh, to the child. And it really is about civil war in Scotland. Whereas the second play, James II came to the throne when he was six. So the early action is seen through a child's memories. And he was used really as uh, a symbol of power. So wherever the body of the king was, was treated as that was the guardian who was ruling the country. And you watch while James grows up. So he starts as six years old and he grows into an 18 year old uh, man. And him, what you watch while he tries to take his independent rule um, and struggles with friendships and relationships as a traumatized young boy who's trying to become a fully grown mature adult. Number three is really a relationship comedy about James III and his Danish queen, Queen Margaret. And really, uh, you watch Queen Margaret grow, gradually take the reins, largely because James III is a vain, uh, narcissistic, selfish man who's quite fun to be with and quite charming. And gradually, Queen Margaret has to take over the reign of government because James is incapable, really. So each one has a distinct flavour and feel, and you get all your sword fights, but also you get, you get dances to Lady Gaga in three. So the other thing is that um, they become more and more irreverent, become more and more contemporary in feel. Mixing up the rehearsals and doing a bit of one, a bit of three, a bit of two, is also something I really like doing, because they inform each other. And we're just doing a, a scene earlier about, really about Queen Joan in one who's terrified uh, living where she is, and she's about to have her first child. The great men are not happy. The noble women are no laughing, and you're scared. But a queen is never frightened. Away! <laughs> I can smell that lie. And it connects up with all the other plays in terms of parents and children, how they feel about their children, particularly how kings feel about their sons who will inherit, and feeling kind of a bit nervous looking over their shoulder, and mothers who maybe love their sons too much. So across the play, that theme plays itself out in lots of different ways, and lots of different versions, and, and it make, adds up to a much more satisfying piece. Mm -hmm.